Welcome back to Stab the Dragon Productions, episode number 156 for the Texas Rye Whiskey Tournament, bracket two, the finals. Tonight, we have Acre Texas Rye 80 Proof, the winner of the lower proof division, facing Tabacaro Texas Rye Malt 105 Proof, winner of the high proof division. Texas makes two main kinds of whiskeys, those that have the Texas funk and those that don't. The Texas Funk is a strong barrel note, the char, that happens when the Texas climate is allowed to affect the whiskey. There are ways to tamp that down, and then you'll get a whiskey that is more closely resembling a Kentucky whiskey. In bracket one of this tournament, I was looking for the best pure clean rye whiskey in Texas that had the Texas Funk under control. Blackland Distilleries 83 proof won. But if you prefer the Texas Funk, and I do, then you can have a competition that simply says, which whiskey do I prefer the most? If I was to drink these two whiskeys five times, which one would I prefer three out of five times? So that's the competition in bracket two. After going through 16 Texas Rise, well, maybe 18, <clears throat> we're down for the final two going head to head. Now, some might say that Pitting an 80 proof whiskey against a 105 proof isn't quite fair. Well, sometimes I like to sip an 80 proof. Other times I like to sip a higher proof. So which one do I prefer? I'm not sure, hence the tournament. So it is fair to see which one I like the most. And here are the competitors. Acre, Texas Rye, fighting out of Fort Worth, 15 minutes from my house. And what used to be known as the Hell's Half Acre, the rowdy part of Fort Worth back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. The Acre Distillery started in 2015 when Tony Formby, the, and one of the owners of RAR, left RAR Brewery as, uh, began, and then began distilling. This whiskey is 80 proof and aged for over two years. The mash contains malted rye and malted barley, both from North Texas farms malted, distilled, and aged by Acre here in Fort Worth. This rye is only available at the distillery, and right now, in February of 2024, it's no longer listed on their website, so I called the distillery thinking, oh no, are you discontinuing your rye? But no, the opposite has in fact happened. The rye has become so popular that they sold out before they were ready. So the next batch is not quite done. It will take another six months or so before they can uh, finish aging and then bottle the whiskey. I paid $39 for this 750 milliliter bottle two years ago. And that's a great price for a craft uh, whiskey. Absolutely. In bracket one, this whiskey lost to Blackland 83, also a Fort Worth distillery in the very first round. And now here it is in the finals. Funny how that has worked out. Now, in this corner, we have Tawakero Texas Rye Malt Whiskey. I reviewed this one in my channel in May of 2022, gave it a score of 93, which is an A+. <clears throat> so this one is a definite contender uh, to win the tournament. And Tawakero was a was, past tense, a local distillery in Grapevine, Texas, about 30 miles from here by DFW Airport. They were founded in 2016. They have now moved on to Palestine, which is in East Texas, between Dallas and Nacogdoches. In 2019, this rye malt won silver at the Whiskies of the World competition and at the Texas Whiskey Festival in April of 2022. It was the winner of the rye whiskey category. This whiskey comes in at 105 proof, and the bottle says it's aged for not less than one year. So we have a one-year Texas whiskey against a two-year Texas whiskey. This whiskey cost $59.99 at Goody Goody, and uh, their website was the only one in the area that listed it. Specs and Total Wine did not list it. I, I don't know. I mean, if it's available at the other stores, but... Liquor store websites are notoriously inaccurate. Now, in my two glasses, on the bottom, I've got uh, 
number one and two. Number one belongs to Acre, and number two belongs to Ta, but I've mixed the glasses up so I don't know which is which, and part of the fun is if I can figure out which is which, although that's not actually part of the competition to determine the winner, it's just part of the fun. So on to the competition. First of all, let's look at label and bottling. Here with the Acre product, we've got a very plain and simple bottle and a plain and simple label. There's no green on here. A lot of companies will use green to indicate a, a rye, but not Acre. And over here, we've got the Tavakero bottle, which is an odd shape. And I inquired about this odd shape, and in fact, it represents a uh, canteen from U.S. Cavalry days back in the 1800s. And you can see that if you've ever seen pictures of canteens back in the day. But again, there's no green on the label. And uh, in fact, one of the problems with this bottle is it's so wide, it takes up a lot of shelf space. And uh, it's it, that's not really good in the retail scenario, but oh well. So to, to compare these two bottles, I think the Tavakero obviously wins because it's just kind of a cool bottle. The appearance of the whiskey. Well, if we hold these two bottles up, they are both very dark. Look at that. A one-year whiskey and a two-year whiskey. And look at how dark that is. Now let's go for the glasses. And again, I don't know which glass is which. When I hold them up like this, those look so close to being equal, I, I can't tell them apart. Nope, I can't tell those apart visually. So that's what uh, the Texas climate does to whiskey. You know, contrast that with a 12-year-old scotch. It's almost uh, just a pale yellow. So appearance-wise, I can't, uh, it, it's a tie. So bottle and label... Uh, goes to Ta, but the appearance of the whiskeys is, is a tie. So now we move on to nosing. This one's got a very nice nose. Immediately I smell some sweetness and some, uh, you know, maybe caramel, Texas funk, hints of. Uh, Leather and tobacco, maybe. If there's any fruit involved, it'll be something dark like uh, maybe prunes, figs. All right, glass on my right. Not much of a nose. <coughs> I think I'm getting the faintest hint of rye spice. Again, some of the Texas funk and char oak. But this nose is clearly not as strong as this one. So whichever one this is wins the nose. It is now time for the taste. Not knowing which is which, I'm going to switch these. So the nose winner is on my right. But because this had the faintest nose, I'm going to start sipping it. Again, Texas Funk leads the way. Caramel, leather, tobacco, oak, fig. That one had a little punch to it. I'm going to say this is the Tawakero. All right. So that should have a number two on the bottom because that 
had a kick. You know, I like the kick. I, I like the burn. Some people would say that's harsh. Some people would say it's not smooth. Smooth is overrated. Um, I was raised by parents from South Texas. I was raised eating jalapenos, chili patines, hot peppers all the way around. So I liked things that burn. I just grew up that way. And this one has got a very nice burn to it. Nice mouthfeel. Okay. Well, that was this one. I switched them. So I think this is the uh, the Tomakuro, I think. No. Crud. I don't know. I didn't switch them. I switched them after the nose. So I think this is the Tawakero. The second sip did not have quite the burn that the first sip had. All right, so I'm going to cleanse my palate. This one had the, the better nose. That's odd. Okay. Going in for the second sip. That is definitely the acre. And this one's definitely the top. So this one should have a two on it. And this one should have a one. Now here's the deal. When you drink a lower proof whiskey after a higher proof whiskey, the higher proof whiskey kind of squashes the lower proof. But still had good flavor. <clears throat> This one still gets the, the leather, the oak, tobacco, but this one I'm actually tasting a little bit of rye spice. Not much. I mean, the Texas funk clamps it down, but <clears throat> particularly on the finish, this one's got maybe a longer finish. That one had the burn, but this one's got the longer finish. That's odd. Yeah, I'm going to say that that is definitely number one. It's got a longer finish. That's the acre. This one had the better mouthfeel and the burn. This is Ta. Now, <clears throat> price wise, you know, that Ta is basically $60, whereas <clears throat> the acre is $40. Well, the acre can only be had at the distillery, whereas the taw can be found at least at Goody Goody. So price and availability, the taw wins. Now it's time for the reveal. I'm saying this one on my left, after I swapped them, is the acre. It should be number one. It is, in fact, number one. This is number two, the taw caro. Tavacaro is the winner. No two ways about it. Tavacaro for the win. Tavacaro, Texas rye malt whiskey. Up to this point, is the best rye in Texas. But that's in bracket two.
you know, to be perfectly fair, I may have to, I may have to take the, like the top four from bracket two against the top four from bracket one and see uh, how that works out. But as of right now, Tawakero is the winner. Now, next week, I've stumbled across a few more Texas Rise. And I've reclaimed a couple that started in bracket one, but I ran out of, failed to carry, carry through into bracket two for a variety of reasons. So what this means is I'll have to supplement with a bracket three. Because if I've got another group of whiskeys that didn't make it all the way through the tournament, instead of doing the tournament all over again, which I'm ready to be done with the tournament, I, I need to do a mini tournament with this other bracket. And then take the winners and, and compete against all that each other so I think that's the plan and then later on in the year my plan is to do a blended scotch tournament so that will come later in the year probably the summer for now we have a champion Tawakero this is Stab the Dragon out here